when you're dealing with these truly bad human beings that have murdered hundreds of thousands of people, what, what makes you believe that when you talk to them and they tell you something that anything they say it can be believed? Well, in dealing with them and dealing with other people who are not so uh, uh, terrible, you have to be able as a mediator to ascertain what is in their own best interest. What, what is their goal in life? What do they want to do with the rest of their days of life? Sometimes they want to repair their international image. Sometimes they want to stop a war and let their own people respect them as peacemakers and so forth. You have to understand them. And, and, <clears throat> and quite often, I'm the only person of an, <clears throat> I'd say, an international stature that will talk to them. And if I uh, am betrayed by them, if they tell me something that I later find to be a lie and condemn them as a liar. And you don't go back. It, well, it's, it's sometimes their last chance. I'm not just exalting myself, but that's a fact. So uh, if I do understand their motivations, which I try to understand before I go, uh, then I, if they tell me they'll do something, I try to put an exact date on it. I try to get them to sign a paper saying they'll do this. <clears throat> I tell them I'm going to report this commitment to the President of the United States and to the Secretary General of the United Nations. Uh, and, and one of the best things I do is to go on television and get them to sit beside me or to repeat their commitment on television. For instance, when I went to see Kim Il-sung in North Korea, uh, I helped to arrange for CNN to be with me. So you have a billion witnesses. So when he got through, uh, everybody knows CNN all over the world. Uh, when we got through and I made the announcement on, on television to CNN, it was binding on them. Same thing with the Bosnian Serbs. Same thing uh, happened with, uh, with General Sedras and, and uh, Jonas Sant, say, in, uh, in Haiti.